Welcome Year 9, I trust you are all well. I'm going to set you up with your um, the work that you're going to do over the course of the next term or starting the week before Easter and then running into Term 5, um, which is your practical um, task that you're going to all complete. Now, this is going to be challenging for you, I know, because firstly you're not in school and don't have um, the benefit of my wisdom to guide you through this. Um, and even more challenging, the fact that you're in lockdown and can't go out, which will pose some problems, but not insurmountable and not problems that you can't overcome if you put your mind to it. So what are you going to be doing? Um, you have a brief to do and it's really important you have a good go at this because it's a practice for what you will do in year 10, which is your actual coursework, which or non-examined assessment, they call it now. Uh, which constitutes 30% of your GCSE in media studies. So it's really good, uh, important to have a go at this. This, please, please don't treat this as unimportant, um, you know, because it will give you a, a really good um, idea of um, how you need to approach um, a practical piece of work, which as I say, will be your actual coursework. So what am I gonna give you to do? So your brief basically, is to create the front page, the front cover, and a double page feature for a special interest magazine. The target audience for your magazine is male or female, or it can be uh, unisex, uh, and the age of your target audience is 13 to 16. It can be a niche audience, that means quite narrow, um, or it could be a broad audience. So, um, you know, a music magazine that aims at a particular genre, um, folk would be a niche magazine. A music magazine that just goes for um, pop in general would be mainstream, for example. Your double page uh, feature, because obviously it's a, a magazine aimed at teenagers, I want you to make your dual page feature about something to do with teenagers in society. So for example, if it was a um, sports magazine, you might want to set up, uh, do a feature about someone who has achieved something or done something in that particular sport, okay? Uh, made their debut for England playing football, whatever it may be. And the reason for that is because it's important to demonstrate an understanding um, of uh, things like stereotypes and uh, challenging stereotypes and then reinforcing stereotypes. And you'll be able to do that through the article that you write. So that's your brief. The first stage, of course, is the research and planning. This is absolutely important that you do this uh, research and do it well because it will inform um, your planning and ultimately the production that you submit. So what I want you to do, and this is what you're going to be doing today, I want you to research at least three existing magazines of your chosen special interest. Okay, and I'll show you some examples a little later. Um, you need to mind map and draft uh, that magazine before you launch into the final product. So this is something that's going to run for quite a few weeks and uh, not something that's just a, a one lesson or two lesson and uh, move on. OK, so. So the front cover, so your front cover needs to have a title and which is the masthead. Um, it needs to have a selling line. I'm not sure that, that one does, actually. It needs to have the cover price, which you can see there. Um, it needs to have a date line, which you can see that one is there. And it needs to have, um, oops, it needs to have the main cover image, which obviously is there. Um, at least four lines. The double page spread, a couple of examples from students in years gone by. Uh, it needs to have the headline, the stand first, which is a kind of introduction to the article, which you can see there. Um, an original copy, which is basically the, the article or interview, uh, 300 words, which is not a lot. It's about a side and a half of you writing in your exercise book. So 
So, um, what does your double page spread need to have then? Um, three images, and one main image. Okay, so thorough research is going to result in effective and authentic draft, and that will in turn re result in an excellent production. Now, what are you going to do today then? So, uh, I want you to choose um, your area of special interest. That's absolutely important. You decide that one first. Think, what can I do? What am I interested in? What is going to engage me? Don't do a music magazine if you have no interest in music. Don't do a golf magazine if you don't know one end of a golf club to another or have no interest in the sport whatsoever. So think about it. I'm giving you quite a broad range, a uh, broad uh, choice here so there must be something that you're interested in okay um when you've decided which genre of magazine you're going to do as your special interest magazine you need to begin by annotating covers okay of that uh, magazine genre um using media terminology so uh, i want you to analyze two magazine covers and two double page spreads um what's really important there is no point you annotating a copy of a music magazine and then for your second one annotating the front cover of a fashion magazine because they're completely different so you're not you're not going to notice and i've got the hiccups now you're not going to notice any similarities um within that particular genre of magazine okay so it's really important decide on the genre you're going to do and stick to it okay So, a front cover, um, although genres um, are all different, the conventions in terms of layout aren't dissimilar, okay? Top magazines have mastheads, which is the title of the magazine. They're split into thirds, and you'll find that a magazine has um, a left, center, and right third cover lines, which is the information you get down the side they tend to be down the right and left third a main cover line which is the one that stands out most sometimes it will be on the third a lot of the times it will be round about uh, here in the sort of the, the middle near the bottom okay barcode which most magazines will have on the front cover and a date line which is where the date sometimes that will be at the top but you'll you'll find this out as you go through okay um, a lot of this stuff you, you'll know. I know you've done with myself and um, particularly with Miss Forrest. You've looked at um, some conventions of layout. So take this copy of uh, L magazine, which is actually a French edition. A um, few things to notice. We talked about some of the features like the masthead. Um, commented on the autumnal colours, which match the, the fact that it is an autumn um, issue. Um, actually thinking about some of the language in terms of what L means. So when you're looking at magazines, think why have they called a music magazine Kerrang? What does Kerrang mean? Um, you know, why is Vogue called Vogue? What are the connotations um, behind some of the language that is used? Obviously, it's more difficult for French. I'm not just focus on the image here. Um, so thinking about in terms of the image, what shot have they gone for? What's the eye contact? What's the lighting? been used how's the lighting been used um, you know and this will help you when it comes to uh, preparing for your own photography but that's much further down the line so don't worry about the the actual uh, production and photography side of it just yet okay so talking about thinking about the fonts the layout the colors lighting all of those things all of that mise-en-scene uh, that you know about all of the uh, semiotics that you've um, um, focused on when you've been looking at um, media texts, print media texts in particular. So loads of things. Now there's several examples here from students and years gone by. I'm not going to talk through each of them, um, but do read through them because they are um, they have been done in detail. You don't have to do it exactly like this, but um, uh, it gives you some idea. Um, this particular student had a lot of Emma Watson magazines. Um, Again, some of the some of the front covers, or particularly the double page spreads, some of the double page spreads that you look at will vary very much. Some will be heavily focused on the 
you know, there's a lot more photography um, than than text. And obviously that depends on the audience, but you do have a brief and you do have to stick to that that um, 300 word brief when it comes to it. But you will notice that, you know, some magazine double page spreads have a lot of um, image and very little writing. But that might be because, you know, the article is on a different page anyway. Um, so lots of detail in the annotations. Um, which you can see there. As I say, do read through these um, before you embark on your own um, task tomorrow, as in Tuesday. So just to recap on the uh, task for today's lesson, Tuesday, you need to choose your area of special interest um, and then begin annotating. Uh, I want you to tomorrow at least or today's lesson whenever you're reading this um, Tuesday's lesson um, two front covers two double page spreads okay the, the front covers will be easy to find on the internet and um, double page spreads not as easy but you will be able to find them okay so at least two um, annotated you choose how you do that um, you do that on a PowerPoint um, as I suggested earlier, just annotating around the uh, image or if you have the, the um, facilities to print it off and do it on paper, annotating it as people used to like doing quite a lot, then do that. Have a scrapbook, do whatever you like. OK, um, so uh, that's what I want you to do today, today. So at least two and then stick to analysing the magazine of your chosen genre. OK, so you're doing travel, do travel. If you're doing music, do music. OK, um, and that's it. Um, so you've got all those examples on the slides which I've just gone through. And this PowerPoint will be available to you, for you to peruse at your leisure. Um, that's it from me. I trust you are well and stay safe. I will be back. I will be back. See ya.